15 second clip. But here we have somebody who's in the friendship with them and really knows how evil they truly are. And I thought he would be a great speaker to really bring it home. Yes? Yes, this Christmas party. Um, yeah, that's the one. It says Friday, December 8th. But oh, no, that's, that's, that's Wednesday. That's here. That's not these cities, but that's yours. Right. Okay. You want to say something? Yeah, so here I go. Torrance Lomita Republican Assembly is one of the conservative group units, and I'm here to talk about what I went through and have survived with Antifa, and I might shove in a few other things really quick. Let them know what I do. We've got some friends of mine over here. Frank Dean. Okay. Mind turn or whatever it is? Okay, here we go. Are ready? Okay, right here. Look at this. Okay. I got the gavel. Okay. Yeah. Hello again. My gavel. Okay. This is my name on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Power trip. Yes. Okay. If we can't get elected, we can at least live fantasies, right? Yeah. So I, I, I want to give a quick shout out. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Jeff Sessions again. He, I put him away for a couple of months. So I was a little unhappy. But one of the reasons I am wearing this is that the FBI is going after Antifa right now. That's why they're not as in full force as they were August the 27th. Um, I, it's so awesome you were talking about Drain So okay, My name is Arthur Shopper, if you don't know who I am, and i got to respect that. So I live here in Torrance. I was the president of the Beach Cities Republicans. Uh, Peter has taken over for that. Uh, I was really proud of, I see a lot of you who are members of that, and some of you who still aren't. So you need to change that. So that was, um, was a real high calling. I got to, a lot of people in that club became more active, just, to, just, just as I did. And I'm talking about what happened to me specifically at UC Berkeley. So before that, hey, Harim, you made it. Harim, how you doing, man? Yeah, how are you? yeah. so he, he's been on the trenches, too. He was there in April when people were getting hit with bike locks and people were getting their sled, their faces slashed. So lucky for me, it wasn't that bad, but it was still pretty, um, pretty intimidating. Um, I went up there. I was at Marco. How many of you know uh, Marco Gutierrez, Latinos for Trump? He's the guy who said, if we don't do something, there's going to be taco trucks in every corner. Yeah, so in spite of that, I saw this guy as spot on saying things that needed to be said and well he was right if things had turned out the way they we feared that they didn't we're going to see real businesses on every corner now so marco gave me his place to stay for a week so that's how much dedicated he was to my being there the patriot prayer was going to have two events one in san francisco and then one in berkeley for patriot prayer i want to be there to keep fighting for free speech you talk about draining the swamp with the academic world, I definitely want to go there. They have this monolithic, liberal, socialist, communist agenda, and kids are just being shoved in the face with it. There's no better way to challenge that than by being there. And to be a Trump supporter as well, and trigger them, or at least get them talking. And uh, I was there at Berkeley in late April when all the, uh, all the liberals fled and the police actually did their job. So they were there, you know, Antifa was pushed to the side, and the rest of us were able to just celebrate. And uh, Ann Coulter bailed on us, but the rest of us showed up. August didn't turn out as well. So I was there in San Francisco. The federal police did a great job. I was right there at Chrissy Field. I could see the San Francisco Bridge. I could see the clouds, you know, embracing the bridge. It was really something. I love San Francisco. I just hate the people running it. So, and, uh, but the federal police did an excellent job. They literally escorted me and another guy named Jovi to our cars. Berkeley was different. So I went there initially, I was there with four others. Uh, Marco was one of them. So I had three Latinos and another guy from North Carolina, but he now lives in Alameda. You wanna talk about a culture shock. This guy's more conservative than I am, but he can make it in Alameda. So that's really something. Um, I was there at uh, was there at Martin Luther King Park. You know, generally you had a bunch of the negative types. Some people had their masks on. You had some people with like the Palestinian, you know, gear around their neck, but I was able to get a lot of points in with people and they were able to talk to me too. Um, the police were there in full, we had county sheriff's deputies as well as Berkeley police. They actually showed up, they were there keeping us separated. So uh, it was really good, we had a lot of reporters there. I was able to throw out some, you know, some real bombs like, uh, you know, the KKK and the Nazis were left wing movements. And that's the truth, if you look at the history on that, Dinesh D'Souza was spot on with that. And that really got people thinking. And one of the reporters even sent that out on social media. He said, we're, we're fixing this narrative. Some of the media people, they were actually very sympathetic to my cause and for the rest of us who were up there stopping for Trump, stopping for freedom of speech. There were progressives for free speech up there as well. It was about one o'clock though. 
For some reason, all the police start leaving the park. And I'm going, why are they leaving? I got two or three messages. Harim even sent me a message. Says, Arthur, you need to get out of there right now. Antifa is coming. So I was kind of stuck because there were like three goals in my mind. I've got to get Marco and the team. I drove four other people with me. So I'm trying to collect them, trying to get out there safely, and then i got to get to my car. And, boy, um, so the only thing going through my mind, because this is me as naive as, I mean, I had a great time at April, April the 30th. They did their job. Five minutes. But they had people walking down the street. All I was following the sheriff's deputy the best that I could. I saw two Antifa thugs. They're dressed in black. They didn't wear a mask. And they immediately started coming after me. Somebody had stopped Marco. I started walking. I didn't want to run because I didn't want to invite them to do worse. And then within two minutes, I'm walking. Somebody grabbed the cape off my back. Someone took my hat off. My glasses had gotten knocked off. The worst part, though, was when I got hit. I got sprayed with something. I was. It was. Uh, I started to feel warm. I didn't feel pain, but it was like, oh crap! I think I just got pepper sprayed. Didn't hit my face, didn't hit my eyes. So I was really lucky, and then glitter hit me too, so it was like two one thing. And I was like, I don't know where to go, because the cops were just nowhere. One guy had grabbed everything, one, and one sheriff had finally got in the way and blocked him. Finally did something, okay? Everything else has been stolen from me, but they finally did something. And what flashed through my mind right then and there, I thought of that lady in San Jose last year. She was wearing one of the football jerseys. She turned into a glass area. She turned into a corner and the cameras kind of were surrounding her. People threw eggs at her. She was a figure, like a martyr for the cause, so to speak. I thought, you know what? That's what I'm going to have to do. I turned into a gas station and I sat down and says, I'm not going to run anywhere. I'm going to use the press. They'll be my wall. You want to talk about building a wall? I'll let the press do it. And they did exactly what I expected them to do. There were all these cameras looking at me. They served as a wall. People, I saw it afterwards. I, they spit on me. They spit on my arm, they spit on me. I didn't feel it probably because the pepper spray was starting to kick in. So whatever shame that they had hoped to induce didn't happen. Right. You know, I, I took a deep breath, I just prayed, I meditated, you know, no weapon formed against me prospers, but every tongue that rises in judgment against me, I condemn. Amen. Now there are gonna be weapons that form, but they won't prosper. I'll explain why. First of all, I wasn't physically damaged in any other way. You had this one crazy pink fat girl standing in front of me saying, you have to go, I will carry you out of here, says, I'm not going. And I continued to say what I had said two hours before. I'm here for Trump, he's helping the economy, I de denounce the white supremacy of the Democratic Party, because it's <laughs> their legacy, not ours, we need to fight this. Then all of a sudden, a Berkeley police officer finally shows up and picks me up and says, do you need medical attention? I go, I don't think so, I was just, I didn't realize what I was going to need in about an hour. So, um, and I yelled at him and said, I need help, but nobody's helping me, and I don't know why. The whole world got to hear that on, because every camera's rolling. The Red Elephants, which is another media group, pro-Trump, they, they just knew that, like God sent them. They, they came right to the gas station. They saw this group of people, and there I was, and they saw me. says, Arthur, get in the car. So they were able to finally rescue me. There was a sequence of me, like, I don't know what happened. I think I got pepper spray, or I got glitter on me. And... Uh, it didn't even end there. They're able to drive a few blocks, and then there were other liberals in cars. They recognized us. There were Antifa talking about me. Oh my God, they're going this way. They were still tracking us. So we had to dart around to try to throw people off. We went to the local police station. There's all these police cars. The police were standing down. And then one of the police officers even said, what are you doing here? You're here to cause trouble. He told us to get out. Like totally hostile to us when we're the victims here. So finally got to my car. I said, I'm gonna have to leave everybody else. I got, out, I got back to the Stockton area, so I'm going from 70 degree weather to 90, and that's when the pepper spray kicked in. It was so painful. It's like I was like gripping the belt on the car to defer the pain, just so I wouldn't feel it. And then I got to Marco's house, and um, he was so gracious, and I just took over the bathroom. I mean, I would walk, stand under the shower for like five or 10 minutes straight just to cool off. Then as soon as I would step out and then it was just the flare up would just take over. It was so, I never felt that kind of pain before. I can't imagine what it's like hitting in the eyes. That didn't happen to me. Although it would start, to, I had to be sure it wouldn't drip in. So that was another thing I had to contend with. It was about an hour straight standing under a shower. Then I was able to go live to let people know I was safe. It is incredible what happened afterwards. Two minutes. You had local media, CBS, NBC, they, they followed me with Marco, and they even said it explicitly. Arthur Shaper, they said it wrong as expected. 
<laughs> he is not a white supremacist. He's with Marco and company, and then they saw what happened to me. I was completely sympathized in the narrative. Yep. It broke the narrative that day. Changed no it. longer was Antifa going to be seen as this liberal outsider group trying to push a principled cause. They're thugs, they're terrorists. To see a media personality confronting Nancy Pelosi head on, after my story, I was mentioned to her. And she said, but this man was not a white supremacist. And she, she has to cover up for it and say, oh, I don't have a problem with Trump supporters. I, that's okay for them to do this. And this is wrong. And I condemn, when it, I condemn what Antifa did. And that's when the DOJ kicked in. They're under investigation. Their numbers are in disarray. I was at a refused fascism event yesterday. 50 people showed up at Pershing Square. 50. That is nothing compared to the 20,000 we saw at LAX yeah. in late January. So, and not only that, but all over the country, people were sending me stuff. There was a black lady, she said to me, that was the Rosa Parks moment. So I'm not the one comparing myself to Rosa Parks. Some people try to shame me about that, but I then throw it back at people and say, I have civil rights too. Those black people fought for their rights, they fought for everybody's rights. We have a right to claim that for ourselves. I got hats and capes coming in because everything had been stolen from me. I have like 15 capes and 20 hats now. So I'm really super bounded in spite of all that. Antifa's on the run. Democrats lost their core domestic terrorist group. And, uh, you know, it's, it, and things just really took off from there. Paul Joseph Watson, my picture was all over the place. People were sharing it to really put the pressure. I had friends in Hawaii saying, oh, my God, we saw you in Brooklyn. It went all over the country. Fine. So, like what you've talked about, and I'll wrap this up really quick. We may not be able to save California right now. I do believe, Gary Galino believes this, we are able to shift so that we keep winning elections in other states. Because they still don't believe what we tell them, like illegals on commissions or there are black goons and police don't protect us, or like yesterday, where a church was teaching illegals how to break our laws, and I'm pushed out as a citizen, and the police side with the illegals. This is happening right now, and we're putting it on full blast for the rest of the country. Really quick, go ahead. Well, Arthur, Arthur goes to tons of events, and I go with, to a lot of them, he goes to nearly everything, it seems like. Can you just tell him what we've all been experiencing as far as the strength and vigor of your numbers and passion? over the last eight months or so? Our numbers have actually increased. We have people from, like Greg Suska has joined our community. He's from Lock Percent. He just saw me. I went to a social, people were pushing for the single payer thing outside of Rendon's office. I went on my own. Nine plus one minute. Okay, so I went on my own and I, you have all these left wing goons. One guy was following me around so I wouldn't cause trouble. Greg showed up to back me up because I'm that naive. I'll march into the flame for all I care. We've had more people. Harim, I had reached out to, and now he's done incredible things. I, you know, I talked about Sandy was there with us at city council meetings. This is the kind of, now I've got Walter Riggs right here with Militant Media. He had reached out to me, and I was able to help him out, you know, protesting Islam and the CARE movement where they had their banquet in Anaheim. You've got Disneyland over there. These guys prey on children. This is a terrible thing. We put on full blast. I just want to give him a shout out. Um, we're just... We're, we're getting more militant. The key is that people have to see it's fun. When I do it, then others do it. And I think that's how we get the numbers up. We get people helping your initiative. And uh, we just, from the grassroots up, we may not have political solutions, but we can have moral victories. And I was able to experience that. No matter what Antifa or anybody threatens, we're starting to win this. I really Nine do. Plus two minutes. So I really appreciate uh, that. Uh, how could we have to wrap it? I understand. So thank you very much. Thank I really you appreciate there. it. You, uh, thank you again. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thanks for your thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.